Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing an interview with my mom. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and um, it's not scripted or anything. We're just going to have a conversation about her experience in a cult that she was in for seven years. I thought it would be really interesting to talk about this and also give you some space to just like share what happened and what's been going on in your life for so long um, and also maybe to warn other people who feel like they may be getting into a cult. Um, so do you want to tell them a bit about the cult that you were stuck in? Like what it's called, where it's located mm -hmm. and what the main reason is that makes you feel like it's a cult? So, I, I, I've always been kind of a seeker, you know, looking for something that is uh, fulfilling, that gives answers to questions that are usually, you know, uh, have not been answered. And I had done so many, many different things in my life to find it. And um, then seven years ago, I went to India to do a meditation and yoga program. And there I thought, I was convinced I had found the person who would give me, or the being who would give me all the answers. So um, he declared that he is an enlightened being who give, can give us enlightenment. He um, will basically give us all the fulfillment if we just follow him and be integrated to his words and basically that he can heal us from all diseases that he can um, that when when we uh, decide to follow him that he is the most important being in our life even more important than family because if one person in the family is following him an enlightened being that deletes all the karma, not just for the devotee, but also for the family. So by following him, his name is, he's known as Paramahamsa Nithyananda. And in, he's from India. Uh, his ashram, his main ashram is near Bangalore in a place called Bididi. And um, he's got other ashrams all over the world as well. But this is his main ashram where also a lot of international people come. And this is where you lived. This is where Most I lived. Most of the yeah. time. So um, after I met him, like I, I was kind of really taken by his um, charisma. He's very articulate. He's got this uncunning ability to feel into everybody and knows what they want. So he promises to give you exactly what you want he gives you that feeling you are special in a way once you buy into it um then another turn happens that whatever you do is never good enough to get really close to him to fulfill him it is always starting then um well you're not integrated enough that's why you're not growing you're not um, if devoted enough, otherwise you would be closer to him. And um, what were the things that you had to do to get closer to him? Like, what did it look like being devoted to him? Like, what did you have to do that you were called a devotee, but what was that? What did you have to do to get close to him? So it was basically um, getting new people to him, getting people to programs. Mm. Um, developing sanghas means communities in the places where I lived. So I, uh, in the first year, I, like I met him, two thousand and twelve mm, in I December. Was in grade twelve, just finished grade twelve. Yeah, you went to South Africa, and I went basically to him, mm -hmm. not quite knowing what to expect. I had no idea. I never really thought I needed a guru. Mm. You know, it was that was not my desire, but my desire was to find that uh, secret, so to say, that leads us to our highest potential, you can say, you know, and makes mm. sense, gives our life, gives my life meaning and, and, and makes, you know, is purposeful, purposeful work and all that. And 
uh, maybe after, only a year later I became a full-time volunteer. Mm -hmm. So then I decided, no, this is, this is, I really want to devote my life to this. And I went first to Germany because originally I'm from Germany and I created the community there. So mm -hmm. lots of people started to follow there too. There was, you know, kind of a stronger base in Germany happening. So your role was to get other people to come, build a community, get more followers, get people to be his devotee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So after that, I then went back to Australia. Like this is where, where I have lived now for 25 years. When I'm not in India, when I've been in, haven't been in India, mm. and uh, I started to create uh, together with others the community there. Um, start to build a temple, an ashram. So we started to live together. The whole life, every basically minute of our life there, evolved around Nithyananda about his work, mm. talking to people, only that was considered basically worthwhile living. Mm. Living, breathing as his disciple, basically. Yeah. And, we did. and um, sorry, let me interrupt you. But so the first few years, just to tell everyone, was like smooth sailing. Like you didn't feel like there was something odd going on or like you were being misused. No, right? I was only feeling... until later on. Or what changed your mind? What made you feel like something's not right, like this is not just, he's not a guru, he's not enlightened. See? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. See, I, I was actually, I was very happy leaving this life, leading this life. Mm -hmm. I was feeling fulfilled. Um, I must say, I, I, the one thing always was there that caused me some pain and that was Justin, you know. So that's my, my son, younger brother. Yeah. He's four years so older than me. He was only 14 when I met Nithyananda. He was then a year in uh, Germany and I spent some time with him there actually. This is what's when I no, this is when I started doing the work in Germany. Mm -hmm. So I was um, uh, and um, so that was always something like nagging in me to leave because you didn't want to actually leave him. Or yeah, I was feeling once I don't know. Is this really right? You know, like I, I was missing him. I knew he was missing me in a way. Uh, uh, trying to find a solution, and I was always told, no, 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 no. It's uh, my incompletion. You know, I have to just complete and understand that so uh, just Nityananda will you. take care of my family. For those who don't understand, what's an incompletion? Because when you first started talking to me about it, I had no idea what you were talking about. Like that's not a term most people oh. tend to know. Yeah, incompletion is basically something that, um, like a pattern. You know, mm -hmm. you have a pattern. And then you think, uh, oh, um, like in that term, my, I, I would have a pattern that I need my children. Or mm -hmm. my, I believe my children need me. And he was trying to break way. that yeah. from you. Yeah. Okay. Obviously then to get you closer to him and away from your family in yeah. hindsight. Yeah. And, uh, but because I was, you know, like then talking, then others were talking to me and I said, okay, yeah, no, this is, this is, I know my kids are fine and nicely guided. It's okay. And uh, I believe that that would be my life forever. Mm. I always wanted to be in India in that ashram, be living with him. I thought that would be the best that could happen to me. And I did. I lived around him then all together for, I think it was all together three and a half years. And even then, you know, like it was hard, like there was a lot of sleep deprivation. There was a lot of, um, you know, sometimes we had to get up in the middle of the night, work throughout the night. Uh, sometimes we didn't get that kind of no fruit, no veggies. So that, that was kind of, yeah, that, there were red flags. But I so is that when you started to realize something's not right? No. Like why are we not getting proper food? Or no. Nothing, no, not no. even then? No, no, because wow. from, it was always explained. Everything was always explained, you know, even like when I saw that other people were really terribly screamed at, 
mm. like blasted, we call it blastings, you know, from directly also Nithyananda or from his high up leads, like the people directly next to him. I never liked it. I never liked seeing it. But it never happened to me then. Mm. And I thought somehow it was always explained. So it's because good. Nityananda is an enlightened being. He knows exactly where your patterns are, your incompletions. And sometimes he had to yell or abuse, basically, like shake your whole system up that you can see it and then work on your incompletions. That and sounds I, so wrong now. Yeah, it sounds so awful now. But at the time, we all kind of believed it. And so did I. Um, when I, like for almost all of the seven years, I was spared of that. I, I think I had a really good time there, you know, like I felt fulfilled. Even like if I had a bad day, I know, okay, it's a bad day. We all have bad days at times, you know, no mm. matter where we live, what we do. But I felt, oh, I've got my place here. I, I you know, everything is basically taken care of. I... Um, no, I'm going towards enlightenment, I'm doing good things by enriching others, like get, uh, telling others also to come because that's for their own good. And um, yeah, because I thought it's going to be for the rest of my life, I gave most of my money actually to him. So I sold my house, I made big donations, I spent so many very expensive programs. So a program now you cost 15,000 US dollars, which is more than 20,000 Australian dollars. And that's for what, a three week program? Yeah, three week program. Exactly. I mean, it was less expensive when I started, but still it was US dollars when I started. You know, my first program I'll cost 10,000 10, 10, US dollars. And then the prices got mm. slowly higher as you uh, got more following. Or... Yeah, and. Um, it was always justified, you know, that we are getting much more than we give in money. And uh, if, if you know, there's this, all these manifestation things happening. And, and did you feel any of that? Like, did you actually, like, do you feel like any of what he was saying is true? Is that how he got people in, reeled people in, because he did magic or he did See, some I, sort of... There, there was magical. a lot of there was a lot of power manifestation that we did, and I did manifest things. You know, I did manifest kind of gold dust in my hands. Uh, then twice I found a little gemstone on my bed. It was just there. You know, nobody could have put it there because nobody was in that area. So yeah, there, there were things happening. I sometimes could tune into other people really well, knowing what they're thinking, knowing what their illnesses are, all that. And is that sort of what kept you going? Like no. thinking this is definitely was, real. Like I was never so okay. keen on the on the power. powers. Like for me, more like that enlightenment aspect was much more. Even though he said when we manifest powers, that's a sign of getting on the right way of of enlightenment. Okay. That is something that never really has drawn me, but it has drawn a lot of people. Mm, I can imagine. A lot of people. And um, what is his promise for enlightenment? Like for those who maybe don't know what that is, what does it mean to be an enlightened being? Like for your soul. So when I'm enlightened, I uh, don't have to come back into this body anymore. So I know myself. And that's a Hindu on principle. All aspects. Is this a, he, he, all based on Hindu principles? Yeah, I don't think in Christianity this exists, but mm -hmm. yes, like um, okay. uh, like a fully self-realized person knows exactly who he is, knows exactly how the world works, how the cosmos works, knows about the uh, different energies of the cosmos, all that. And uh, by knowing yourself that well, that like is the purpose of life to really know yourself, then you don't have to come back into this body anymore. And we were told that once we are enlightened, we have a choice of either merging with him um, in that different level, uh, energy space, or to come back once more and just have a beautiful life of enjoyment. 
So that that was kind of the that big sounds carrot. Very nice. Sounds yeah. like he, that's probably what got people into it. Yeah, that is like that carrot that was always dangled in mm. front of us. And uh, yeah. So when in this journey, because you only left actually quite recently, mm. like you were in there for seven years, what was like the tipping point where you started to think maybe I should leave or maybe there's something wrong? Like, can you give us an example of like what caused that to happen? See, I was, I was like, uh, Ms. Yananda, he, now what I then understood, now understood is he has a lot of criminal charges against him. And he had left India because there was no way out there. Basically, he absconded. And uh, he was still kind of um, a bit active on Facebook and so on so yeah i was in contact with him and then he said well go to gujarat that was a new adinam a new ashram built there get trained and then you come to me you you can live with me that's and so that, scary i'm so glad that never happened and uh, yeah that was for me kind of oh, that's all i wanted so i went there and was totally overloaded with responsibilities. I was responsible for three different departments, like, you know, coursing, all the programs, all the fundraising. Oh, now that you say that, can you tell everyone, or me as well, like, I remember you telling me a while ago, like you had a checklist of things you had to get done, like every day, something like mm -hmm. three YouTube videos, certain posts on Facebook. Yeah, that that, that, was that, part, that was part of now your responsibilities. Yeah. No, that, that was on top of everything else that also okay. had to be done. But I was in charge of a group of people and together we had very, very high goals. Like like we had to get, I don't know, like 100 Pada Pujas. Like Pada Puja is a ceremony done to the Guru, like a worship. And it cost a thousand US dollars. If you do oh it, and goodness. then wow. he, um, then he gives, then he gives you a call after that. So you do that on two ways. Like he sees you as well, gives you blessings, and then he calls you all back. over the internet, like on Skype or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we also had to get, uh, I can't remember, lots of donations. It was maybe like a million dollars donations within a few months of time. Uh, we had to get temples and properties and all that you know mm. it, it was big it was huge it was no way possible to get and uh, then i became the target of the blastings like uh, there was that that woman like my prana priya she was uh, we actually we used to be friends in melbourne we used to live together she's also I indian remember. And we had such a good time in Melbourne together for so many years. It was great. Now, then she became the right hand of Nithyananda and she actually has changed so much. And I'm feeling really so worried about her because she's absolutely totally brainwashed now. So she became, she took on this role of just blasting people left, right and center and um, has really lost kind of this nice kind hearted being that she is also that she also is and um, she, yeah it turned against me and I, I I always knew I will not be able to tolerate that and um, and it became so obvious because I was really trying my absolute best to be there to hold the group to do what is uh, required and then and you were so kind yeah and generous and yeah. everything that everybody else was not yeah and actually afterwards i must say so many people you know reached out to me and says oh my god you you were the light of the whole sangha you know like i it, it, i don't want to now make myself feel you know above others but it was one of the things that I, I think that people noticed that mm -hmm. i was very integrated i was very sincere and I would never, ever, ever blast anyone like or be unkind to anyone, mm. no matter how little sleep I had or exhausted I was, you know, like, and um, yeah, so, and then it started and straight away I knew, oh my God, they're doing this to 
make me feel really small, to uh, take my, my my self-confidence totally away and that I couldn't tolerate that and I started also to and then I, 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 uh, I wanted to leave and I reached out to Nithyananda and I says I can't handle this I, this is not inspiring to me I don't want to be um, trained by greed and fear I and I will never do that I that's not me and I want to leave and then he said so many nice things again I said yeah I'll make it easy for you da 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 and I stayed and then again it happened and again I wrote to him and again he you know reeled me back in and then I was uh, called for to to Bididi to our main ashram together with a group of maybe other 20 people uh, and there that that was really the, the, the thing that got me totally woke me up uh, there was a group all together then in, in, we were you know a group of i think 30 people um, and most of the women were preparing false rape stories like how government officials had raped them police had raped them who whatever journalists had raped them what just to for? uh just to create um a story of the anti-Hindu persecution. Mm. Okay. So, you know, like that there is a big ganging up against Nithyananda who only does good and brings enlightenment and Hinduism. And there are the anti-Hindu forces who want to stop him. Okay. But really got me out is like to see how lies are getting oh. fabricated mm. to defend him. That was something I could absolutely not tolerate. Mm. So from that, I thought, my God, if that is all the lies. So it was only it was all going in front of the UN to get him. Uh, 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 what's it called? The status that he gets asylum. Oh yes, somewhere. Yeah. So that, that, that that was all done, uh, and I thought, no, this. Then I started to think, what because else I are lies? You told me and you said, you mentioned you had found some documents or something which yeah. just made you think this is not, yeah. not right. Yeah. So then I thought, what else are lies? And I started to, you know, on the way back uh, from the, the main ashram to Gujarat, I didn't sleep. It took a 30 hours journey or something. And I just checked and checked and checked, and I know that all oh, there were a lot of court documents that I had ignored. There was a, a a sex video that showed him with an actress who became the main um, sannyasi uh, in the ashram, and I I saw it and I thought, oh my god, this is absolute true. It, it's not uh, a morph, fabricated. It's not morphed. And I read the court documents and I thought, oh my God, I <laughs> just had so, so many like racketeering, you know, means like um, getting money from people under false pretense and false promises. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that was enough for me. And I just knew I had to get out immediately. Like the minute I came back, I knew um, um, that's it for me. So basically I uh, went back in the night to the place I stayed, which was outside the campus. Everybody else, most of the people were still were already in the campus, which is then very hard to get out. I was one of the people who was still staying in a um, house. And I knew, I, I, I knew I had to leave. So the next morning I pretended to be sick. I didn't go with the bus to the campus and I booked my flight and my Hotel, you know, I went to Varanasi. So yeah, and I left my my suitcase. Every, you know, no, you left your laptop, laptop. your suitcase. I, I just thought I, I can't do because they will try everything they can to get me back to convince me I need to stay. And I thought I can't even stay another week or two, or not even the weekend. Were yeah, you and then scared for your life, like when you left. Yeah, I like, was were you oh, worried that he would do something. Yeah, because like leaving him, it's like. Guru Droha, which we, you know, we are, we are learning like 
Guru Droha is something you do against your Guru. That is the worst thing that can ever happen. And people really go against people who leave. So they make up stories about them, you know, mm. character, character assassination. Um, there were cases where people were beaten up. Like, I, I, I was scared, you know, I was scared. They were really trying to force me to come back or something, which I now think they probably wouldn't, you know, have used physical force on me because I'm a, a Westerner. Like, they, 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 they haven't really used that much violence against, against Westerners. Um, but uh, I was scared. I was also scared to speak up. I was scared to reach out to people. I was scared they would check on me because this is what they have been doing. Mm. And uh, for quite some time, I did not really speak out at all. And uh, it is only there was one friend, you know, like I called her the day when I decided to leave. And she said, well, you have to, you have to leave. You have to get out, you know, like... Um, you have to understand it's a cult. And that was the word kind of a cult. Mm. A cult. I mean, a cult is simple. Like, it, it was never thought of that, but it is absolutely, it is. Uh, a I cult. Could, the minute that word that clicked and I understood. Oh my God, yes, it is. It, it, and, it um, was totally, I was totally brainwashed into something that I actually had no control over it anymore because I gave my power away. I gave my um, my thinking hmm. away by You had believing. almost no free will, actually. Yeah. You just did what you no. said. And yeah. Yeah. That was that. Yeah. And um, a lot of people have mentioned, like online, that his cult um, is very similar to Scientology. Yeah, he learned a lot from Scientology. He actually exactly. studied... Yeah, he studied Scientology actually and took a lot from them. Like that completion process is actually very similar to what they have uh, with this. Oh God, what's it called now? I forgot now the, the, the terminology. Mm. So you, you have kind of, a, it's like a light detector or a mm. detector, like, and then you go into your past and it's something very similar to what it's done. With us and also the control and the mechanism that happens if somebody was going to leave the force and once I've left and looked more into details then I found out much more that I had ever could have imagined you know like there's a lot of physical violence from him from him done to his sannyasis, only the close people, like the people online somewhere, you know, who are just loving him and maybe going to a program every now and then, they will never ever see that side of him. But so the sannyasis are higher up and close to him, basically live in his yeah. little circle. Yeah. So basically, the, the, the closer you are to him, the more you have given up in life, the more he is... Uh, controlling, controlling your life and also with physical violence uh, he has used a lot of his male and female sannyasis for sexual favors, even children. So it is, so it is so way beyond anything I could have ever imagined and it's really hard to see that now. I, I would never have thought he would be doing this. I saw him as this beautiful, benevolent, enlightened being, you know, like... Uh, and I think what's also like important to talk about is like, you're not just like someone who's illiterate, who's now getting sucked into this thing, you know what I mean? You're like a normal human being who's yeah, like... Yeah, like I've studied, studied and... <laughs> Had you know, like even work in the in 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 in, in the uh, uh, justice system, and, and somehow he managed to brainwash you still. And the thing is, like that whole cult exists. I'd, I'd say ninety percent of the people is staunch followers are highly educated people. Maybe they're looking for something more. Yeah, because out of life, and for, that's how he gets them in. Exactly, because for those people, first of all, he's targeting those people because they have money, mm. and um, 
then he's giving them what they are seeking. So they are satisfied with their financial well-being and their intellectual well-being, but the spiritual well-being isn't fulfilled or the meaning of life. So this... That's what he works yeah, on. This is what he works in. on, yeah. And they, they don't see it. Like it's... Uh, I mean, now more and more people have left, but he is pulling in more and more people still. You Even know, though people are speaking up about yeah. it. So what would you say to someone who feels like they could be stuck in something like you were? Like what, what are some warning, early, early warning signs where you could think? Well, once you're already wrong. stuck in there, that the thing is you, you get brainwashed and mind controlled of not ever listening to anything else that mm. as what the guru says or whoever is leading the cult. And I know you mentioned he often says in his... Um, talks online that you shouldn't actually look into anything anyway because you yeah. just trust him with everything you have. Yeah, you should just 150% trust him. Why do all the reading when he has already done it for us and he just gives it to us? You know, we can trust him and he says so many times, trust me, I'm not uh, using you, I'm just there for you and he's Blindly saying all lying the to things, your face. yeah, he's saying all the things, you know, I'm your mother, I'm your father, I love you and all this stuff he's saying Saying, um, and I'm your guru, I'm your god, I'm Sadashiva, you know, I'm, I, I know I have control over everything basically, you know, I know you better than you do. And when you hear this often, once you are in there, it's very difficult. I think the only thing is like for me that everybody has uh, some core values. Mm. Once once that border is crossed, that line is crossed, then there is a chance to wake up. Like for me, it was that the lies, you know, I cannot tolerate lies. Mm. So that was for me the point where, where, where I woke up and I was, oh my God. And this is wrong. Yeah. yeah, this is so wrong. And even like uh, when they started to yell at me, it was like, no, I can't live this life. I get out, but I still love him, you know? Mm. But that was something directly like being instructed by him and done by him that lie, you know, when I was seeing all the lies. Because you just thought maybe it was his disciples who have gone off the rails and lying and shouting and maybe not and, and no, 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 no. I always knew that whenever they shouted, it was also coming from him. But I, we were told they are uh, his extension. Whatever they say is coming directly from him. And because I thought we all believed like he's unfailable and he's beyond reproach, like, yeah, he, he knows what he's doing. And, but um, yeah, so I, I would have left if I, I probably would have left anyway, but still loving him, worshipping him and, you know, just thinking, oh, I'm not made for this kind of lifestyle. But that was directly questioning him and made me look into who is he, what is he doing, you know, with people. Yeah, so that, that and I think everybody has that somewhere, um, and, that, um, that, that particular one where all of a sudden you cannot tolerate something. One last question I wanted to ask you, which might be a little bit personal, but what do you think now looking back when like Justin had of like, because he mentioned to you a couple of times, like, these are the red flags I see. When you think back now, like, what did you obviously think at the time when he told you? Because, like, he often told you, like, this doesn't seem right or, you know, something's mm. wrong with this. And Well, I thought, oh, he just can't see it. You know, like, anybody who would speak, uh, try to you know, make sense to me, I, I would think, well, yeah, of course, you they see it that understand. way because uh, they don't understand I'm the one living with him. You know, I know him better. Mm. Yeah, so it's very, very, very hard for anyone, for family, for anyone trying to get somebody out of a cult, unfortunately. Because mm, you can say what you want, but yeah, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. And I see it now, you know, like all my really close friends from the, the time, like many have blocked me even. I can't even reach them anymore. They don't speak to me. Um, and whatever, even if they write, read something, they, they think it's, it's, it's their lies. They're so convinced, whatever, like... We, we These are now your friends who were in yeah, the, the cult, in the Yeah, Sunday in the cult. Night, but 
in the okay. cup. We are still in there. Mm, that they are convinced, like that we are all lying. Like we have a group. It's almost three hundred people who have somehow experienced him in different levels, you know, or that cult. And uh, they believe the narrative that he's giving that we are all anti-Hindu terrorists. And, terrorists, uh, you as a terrorist. Yeah. Can't even and uh, that. and um, that, yeah, so that's, that, that, that's basically where they are and he tells them every day every day he tells them don't listen to them it's bad for you you are ruining your life it's bad bad karma will come on to you if you leave me so just you know like all sorts of and things i'm the only one it. who can help you and uh, they believe it and they will not listen they will not listen they will not take it in as mm. or at all they will not take it in as a truth they will see i look all these liars and um, before we finish the video, is there anything else you wanted to say about it? Like anything you feel is important to tell people? Well, all I can say is like if you feel drawn to someone, you know, like very charismatic or think this is the answers to all your questions and all your desires, do your research. You know, mm -hmm. really find other people who have left. Find, read everything you can and take it in. That's all I can say. I think that... Uh, what once you're in there it's almost too late you know like because these guys like i know he's using hypnosis he's a, he, he is a master manipulator he's using black magic he's using everything in the books possible to get you oh, to get your soul so to say you know and um once you're caught it's very hard and uh, so, like before even giving anybody that trust is really important to look and read and do your... I did my research, but I only at that time could find um, reviews from people who were so happy. Maybe at you that time, want to see the things that were so bad as well. Maybe, though. maybe. But seven years ago, it was always mm. different. There were not so many people speaking up. Mm. Now more and more people speaking up. You just uh, Google Nithyananda and you see a whole lot of people speaking out, but it wasn't there at the time. So, yeah, so it's, it really do your due diligence and, um, yeah, that's all I can say to that. Thanks, Mom. No, my pleasure. Thank you for listening. Um, if you guys want to check out any other videos, you can maybe go onto your Facebook. You have a lot of information on there. Yeah, or... I've got a lot of I've got a lot of information on Facebook. You know about cults in general, in particular about Nithyananda. But uh... I'll link it. Um, I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out and yeah. learn a little bit more um, about what's going on. Um, but that's going to be the end of this video. It's already pretty long. Mm. Um, thanks for joining me on this video. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, if you guys can all get a, give it a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And um, we'll see you guys in another video. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you.